There's a good shot of South Mineral Creek. <laughs> the last water crossing before yep. uh, hitting uh, the home stretch here, just outside of town, about what, about a mile and a half up the road, up uh, 550? Mm-hmm. Yep. And they have a rope there this year because it's pretty swift. Yeah, it's moving pretty, uh, pretty swift out there, as you mentioned. Chris Thornley, no boats. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know, that's a, I, I would, that's a loose word to call that a creek. <laughs> yeah, this year, it's, this year it's a full blown river. I mean, it, wait, is. Thanks for confirmation in the chat. There's some photos. Oh, that's from Courtney. There's, Courtney. There's Courtney right there. We've got Courtney. She has on arrived at South Crossing. Mineral Creek. And Kevin's Kevin's still Kevin. with her. And Kevin <laughs> is with her. There we go. There's full blown video confirmation. And that Mineral Creek Crossing is just uh, less than two miles from from the school here. So uh, we're going to be seeing Courtney hit town here very quickly. So, and some quick math. I think people have been asking about course record and they've been asking about the double record. And given that it's uh, 25, 48 into the race, uh, she's pretty much mm. got both of those in the bag. She'll, yeah. she'll finish somewhere in the 26, 20, 26, 30 range. And, yeah. She's consistent. Yep. That was, what was her record last year in the other direction? 26. It was, it was just a something low 26, mid 26. Yeah. She is consistent. This is another mind blowing it, and you know it, it like states you can't like really like be like okay this could be this 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 it's hard rock anything yeah. could have happened at the aid stations in the last 20 miles 30 miles but like that is a stout that, that is. time after what she did what three weeks ago yeah. two weeks ago jory yeah. boswell mileage from here two miles if that change. oh you think it's that you think it's more than two yeah to the river yeah, they, they've, they've okay. got to go. They've got to hit that trail. Oh, that's right. They do have that segment on Rainbow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her time last year was twenty six forty four. So she's going to come in uh, a, a handful easy. of minutes under this in each so. direction, within a couple of minutes probably. And to be the course record holder in both directions is yeah pretty amazing. This is great. She, they they jump onto this trail, and we will we will have a camera with her. And Kevin. If you're a follow cam and your your mission is to keep up with Courtney DeWalter, <laughs> you even even 98 miles of a head start, yeah. you know you might have fresh legs, but still got to be a little bit nerve wracking to yeah. Yeah. figure out whether or not you can uh, get the job done because she's been known to drop a pacer or two in her day. So. <laughs> I think Kevin's safe. He's going to enjoy this, and so is she. Oh, is that Javi? That- yeah. Javier Very Dominguez, nice. uh, Javi closing hot on Courtney's place. tail here. Could be interesting uh, for the uh, uh, third overall finisher here at Hard Rock 100. And Javi has done this entire race solo. Uh, no, no, no crew. A couple of the aid stations we saw aid stations volunteers helping him out, but uh, impressive finish for. Yeah, that's less than a Javi minute Dominguez. gap between the two of them right there. That oh, is nice. really yeah. close with two miles to go. So. Uh, Javier and Courtney is the race that we're uh, catching here at the end of the at, at the end of the women's race as well. Granite State Trail Runners has a woman podiumed overall at Hard Rock. Yes, Diana Finkel did it a couple times, including the year she set the counterclockwise record, which uh, Courtney's going to break today. Uh, both times finishing in third place. So there have been there have been successful women uh, in the top three overall here at Hard Rock. This is great footage of Javi Dominguez making that little climb up from the road crossing. Well, the creek crossing, then the road crossing. Yeah, and they're on the Rainbow Trail, which is going to spit them out literally just on the outskirts of town. So, and then they have that. We watched uh, the first two finishers kind of grind up that road. Oh, that road <laughs> section. Yeah, we talked I about out, earlier. Do I went out there. And, yeah, I went out there and hiked <laughs> that just. Just hiked and jogged it yesterday, and I realized gosh, they they make you go up a little bit here at the end before that nice single track descent from Shrine of the Mines. Yeah, thanks, Aid Station Fireball, for the reminder. Diana actually finished second overall back in the day. Yeah, as as we mentioned last night, it is. It's amazing to me how few records there are that have held on for more than a decade in this sport. Mm-hmm. And uh, Diana's record here uh, is one that 
had stood the test of time for over a decade. You know, there's not many of these numbers left that that are sticking around. But <laughs> Courtney now has uh, gone back to ba- in two months, basically knocked down two of uh, the more uh, hallowed numbers in American mm-hmm. ultra running to, to see her take down uh, the Ellie Greenwood number at uh, Western States and now at Hard Rock doing it, doing it again just three, three weeks later. Mm-hmm. I, I got to bring up a meme at this point. <laughs> um, I don't know who, whose it was. Maybe your boy, Scott Jurek. Um, <laughs> it was a Grim Reaper and there was like hotel oh, the, <laughs> the records and oh, then yeah. just blood coming out and it was like Diagonal de Fou and I can't even think of which ones now, you know, Western States and then it had Hard Rock and it was a closed door so we didn't know it was going to happen, but... Well, now they're going to have to adjust it. Yeah, they're going to have to keep getting longer. And th- <laughs> this is one thing I definitely wanted to avoid was the whole what's next. I want to ap- sit and appreciate and list- let this yeah. whole effort and uh, moment soak in. This is truly amazing. And now we've got a, a bit of a fun thing to follow here with Javier and Courtney neck and neck as they approach the, the final stretches of town. Question in the chat about anybody winning either on the men's or women's side, Western States and Hard Rock in the same year? Nope. This is never it. happened. This oh, be wow. the first time. There have been runners podiuming, winning one, top three in the other. Jeff Browning comes to mind. But, 2018, uh, yeah. But this is the first time uh, uh, an individual will win both. And um, b- just throw in course records at the same time. So yeah. win, That's- course record. <laughs> Who is ahead, Javier or Courtney? We think Courtney's still ahead, but it's got to be real close mm-hmm. here. We're talking, uh, no matter where they're at, I'm assuming less than 60 seconds separates the two of them. It's got to be really close. And if not, no more than a couple moments. I'm trying to like track mo- spots on the trail and check to see if the person following Javier actually has eyes on Courtney and Kevin as well. Because th- there's not quite enough straightaway to be 100% sure how far apart they are, but... Uh, they're both running through those last stretches of trail here, uh, about 98 and a half miles into the, the Hard Rock 100. So uh, it's going to come to who runs that road up. Yeah. Yeah. This single track will pour out onto a dirt road that'll make a little left turn and grind up. Uh, and it's uh, it's tempting to just walk it. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder uh, if she knows how close. I'm sure she knows how close he is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Brett asking in the chat, how much longer do they have before Courtney and Javier finish? And do I have time for a quick run before? If you're doing speed work and maybe you (laughs) only need to do like six by 400, then yeah. strides maybe. Yeah, that's about it. But I wouldn't go unless you had uh, maybe less than 15 minutes on the calendar because that's about all we're looking at here. Why would you want to leave? If you can see over Javier's shoulder, if... uh, if she's in sight yet, but mm, they're on the um, oh that traverse across that rainbow. That's why they call it the rainbow trail. Yeah, that colorful scree. Just not too far from being able to see town, really, at this yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, that's got to be motivating. Like, I think when you get close to the finish. At least for me, like things stop hurting and you can move oh, faster. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. So Kevin is, or I mean, I'm sorry, Javier is. It looks like maybe about a minute and a half behind, if if it based on where he's, he's going to be hitting the street. Too. That's a good point. Yeah, he's he's going to be getting to that colorful scree section. There yeah, it is. They might. So, yeah. We might see <laughs> them. He's moving he really well. Far. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. That. That is a fast stride right in, at this section here. So he nice is nice work. Follow cam. Yeah, both follow cams. Well, we see that at all of our big time races here in this. Uh, you know, those people who are you know follow cam for the lead lead runners at something like this or Western States. You know, they're getting the workout, and it's not something where you can just kind of leisurely you know run in, even at mile ninety eight, ninety nine. Mm-hmm. You know, these runners are booking. People are gathering outside. I can see there's. Do, do we have people. a? Can we just do a quick shot of the uh, static cam outside, Bryce, to show uh, where they're headed? Yeah, it looks like we actually have uh, Tony at the finish line setting up a camera now. So actually, pause on that. We, it looks like Courtney was taking a quick pause here, and I want to see if we have any sort of 
action here on the course. Nearing the 26 hour mark. I think she just made a gesture. Or okay, you know, yeah. Like the, I don't know if we just like the fr yeah. uh, refresh rate. Yeah, if we can just show really quick how uh, things look outside, just to give people an idea of. Ah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. That's such a b perfect picture in picture shot of the finish line shoot here in Silverton, Colorado. As uh, Courtney finds herself uh, in a foot race here to the finish, which could be exciting. No, that is not the competitor following her that she is uh, uh, trying to outlast. That is uh, her husband, Kevin. But uh, Javier Dominguez is hot on her tail. <laughs> they are very close together. So this little section of single track, it is beautiful. Just parallels the highway. Yep. We'll go into the woods one more time here. Okay, he's then, in, on yeah. the other side. Yeah. Going I mean, the that's woods not even a time. minute, is it? No, I don't think it's even a minute. Yeah. And this is slightly down. They were going to yeah. hit that road, which. Then it'll be interesting, Maggie, that to see what sort of running is going on in that I think road. they'll both be running. <laughs> I think they'll both be running, yep. This is going to be really exciting. Okay, so Courtney has made it through the scree field and is okay. on the final stretches of Rainbow Trail. I almost wonder if that was Kevin looking back. Kevin gave it a little look back. Know. Absolutely. <laughs> At different stages of the race, the pacer takes on different responsibilities. In this case, his is to have his head on a swivel. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the splits and number guy. Like, mm -hmm. he knows what's going on. Courtney's just running, basically. <laughs> yeah, it, it, she definitely comes across as a total field runner where you go do, like, a point-and-fire weapon almost as far as, you know, how she approaches a race. She's going to go out, she's going to do it how she feels, and then Kevin is there to kind of help like you know navigate the numbers and make sure that she's where she needs to be and wants to be so mm -hmm. yeah. they really oh. are oh oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <Thank gosh. There's laughs> <a good> <laughs> that is close you're talking what maybe 60 70 meters at that point it looks do i have cool. to be unbiased because i'm like <laughs> i want to scream courtney run <laughs> yeah they're right there that's yeah look at how close oh, uh, he may close pass behind. her yeah, he's closing hard. It's going to be a very tight finish here. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> a lot of traffic on the trail in a small section right there. Well, they're going to have to pass the camera guy, too. Yeah. I'm sure he'll get out of the way. Oh, Kevin and taking a, a peek back more than a peek. He passed her. There's the pass. Oh, there's Aw, she's oh. congratulating. <laughs> <laughs> Such a, that's awesome. A great moment. Both of them. Uh, oh, they're chatting. Oh, that's great. Oh, it'll be a fly in the wall here. Maybe they'll hold hands while they finish. It's been known to happen here before. <laughs> uh, I think that Hard Rock might bring that kind of different mentality out simply because, correct me if I'm wrong, because you've run it. I've not. But, you know, when Killian and uh, Jason, Schla was that Jason Schlarb, Jason Schlarb yeah. a couple of years ago, you know, basically crossed the finish line together. You know, what makes Hard Rock so different, that if you, the two of you could speak to that, where you're actually willing to do something like that as opposed to maybe kick out otherwise? I think it's been talked about in the live show, but it's you against the course. I know people are competing and stuff, yeah. but at the end of the day, this is a really tough course. And if, yeah. you know, you share a lot of miles with someone, it's not about beating them. I think, too, there are times all through the day where you might be together on a gnarly climb like going up to Virginia so you might be sitting in an aid station together and you strike up a relationship even you know people from two different countries uh, and and you, it, there's a there's a camaraderie that develops and yeah it, you know it's it happens in a lot of ultras but because of the the sheer nature of hard rock uh, the difficulty of the course how difficult it is to get in uh, there's a little bit more of that here than I would say at most races. So that that clip there of Javier and uh, Courtney having a little exchange and talking, who knows, there might have been a, you know, do you want to finish together or something like that. Um, but it was, it was kind of clear that Javier was running better, uh, at least at this little moment. And... Uh, and I'm, I'm sure uh, Courtney feels just fine about it. <laughs> I, I have to disagree with this comment in the chat. Uh, send a peek saying Javi being solo gave him the advantage to close. I don't think that that came into the, uh, the conversation or the mentality at all. If Courtney wanted to 
it, it, Courtney's not going to hold back because of having a pacer. It's just not how it works. She's doing what she wants to do, and she's not going to let somebody else dictate her race at this point. I cannot wait until they get into town here. I, the, the, the background noise here it's, in the gym is going to be wonderful. It's going to be insane. For both of these runners, to, uh, for Javier to round up the men's podium and for Courtney to be the, uh, not only the women's champion, but uh, finishing in the top four and also uh, holding now the course record in both directions. Truly an amazing effort here this week. For, uh, a court, this weekend for Courtney DeWalter. He's about to get to the road, I think. Yeah, 48-year-old.